I'm gonna be honest, I don't wanna mispronounce your name, so allow me to call you Mr. S. And thanks for reaching out and buying my game asset tutorial. So let's talk about the issues you said you were having. And from what I can see, they seem mostly like seam related issues. And this one right here is a little more tricky because you said you don't have uh, reversed faces in Maya, but we'll get to that. So let's start by saying that your meshes are actually fine topology wise. So this looks pretty good. It's nice high poly. Let's hide it and bring in the low poly as well. Here it is. Let's put it in its own layer just to sort of organize things low and let's change the color. Cool, so now we have both of them right here. Okay, so your low poly is also good, but the best way to fix seams is to just not have them. And there's a few other ways of fixing a lot of this extra detail, but let's start with the most obvious one. So if we take a look at this piece and let's open our UV editor, and can I just dock this right here? There you go. So the first thing I see is that this little piece is split into a bunch of separate islands and it doesn't actually need to be. So I know that sometimes it's, you just have to add a seam, for instance, on uh, this piece right here, it makes perfect sense. You just have to split it off. And here it's not as bad because you can sort of pretend that it's edge wear when you start texturing it. But for this little piece, it, it just doesn't really make sense to have that many uh, UV shells. So we can combine all of these and it's okay if we get distortion because it's just so small and no one's ever gonna notice. Right here, so fix number one, uh, just get rid of all those seams entirely. So let me just try, uh, let's try planar mapping. So that way I make sure it's one single piece. And let me also control one to isolate it. I can't see. <laughs> Let's make this smaller. I haven't used Maya in a while. Cool. So one thing you can do is just add a single seam at the back. And I know that you probably have the untriangulated version. So this will be a lot easier for you. But yeah, good idea to triangulate if you're going to do mesh baking. So you can do this and then just go to our UV window, shift right click, cut and select the whole thing and unfold. And that's it, it looks terrible, but like I said before, it's okay to have distortion. This is gonna work just fine because it's such a small piece. And actually you can take it one step further by deleting a lot of these back faces that aren't even visible. And you won't save that much UV space by doing this because again, it's really, really small, but I believe that's what I did. And that's something else you can do. But yeah, just try to hide your seam and you don't really have to uh, split this off into too many parts. So let's actually delete that as well and let's try this out. So I'm only gonna do one piece, I'm not gonna do all of them. Okay, so this is fix number one, just uh, simplify the UV shell. I, I kind of moved it into place very quickly that texel density is not gonna be perfect. This probably needs to be smaller, but that's okay. Just fix number one, let's export the whole thing and set this to be new. So on Substance Painter, I am just going to go to Edit, and Project, and replace my low poly. And I'm gonna need to rebake, so let's just bake. And I'm pretty sure I'm using default settings. We're, I'll go over some of these for now because I, I noticed uh, one issue. So notice how much more clean this piece is just because we only have one UV shell and we got rid of unnecessary seams. So obviously you can't do that for everything and sometimes we just need to have some seams. So how do we fix the rest of them? Back in Maya, I'm gonna select the whole thing and go to Mesh Display and lock Normals. There is. So that's just because uh, FBX, I think, comes in with lock normals. But in your original file, you probably don't need to do that. Anyway, this is what I actually want you to do. Select all of the edges, and in your 3D view, soften edge. All of them. Okay, what do we do afterwards? This time, we're going to go to select by type, texture borders, and click on it. And it's going to take a second if you have a lot of UV shells to find all of the edges of our 
well, of our shells. So there you go, we've selected only the borders. And this time, we're gonna shift right click and harden the borders of the shells. Cool. So let's export this and see what the difference is. This is gonna be new two. And let's replace that. Click OK. Bake again. And we definitely cleaned up a lot of our edges. So simplifying our UV shells, that's an optional thing. You can do that whenever you want. But setting the borders of your shells to be hard and everything else to be soft is something you pretty much always want to do because it can only help. So what else can we do? Let's actually go to our bake mesh settings. And the first thing we can do that's pretty much always going to reduce our, uh, our seams and some of those artifacts is to just increase the resolution. So let's actually do that. And let's, what else we can do? I don't think this is going to make much of a difference, but I'm going to set it to eight. And anti-aliasing, let's set it to four so it looks really smooth. And this one's important, match. So let's set this to be match by mesh name. And this is another thing I noticed in your file. So notice here how we don't have uh, capital letters or whatever you call them. And here in your file, you actually do. So low starts with a capital L and high with a capital H. So I think that's actually gonna prevent this from working. So let's actually change this like this. Seems silly, it shouldn't really matter, but I'm pretty sure it does. So okay, I have all of those settings set and I think that's the only thing I need to change. So let's do another bake and see what we get. So this is a lot cleaner and I actually took some screenshots of each step. So let's actually review those and look at the difference. So this is what we had at first with the mesh you sent me with default settings in Substance Painter, I think. And here is by simplifying some of our UV shells. And here is when we hardened the edges of our shells and softened everything, uh, everything that remained. And finally, just turning up the resolution and the anti-alias. So we started with this and we ended with this. So let me just briefly go back to the first mesh and Errors such as this one, this line that you see right here, that's the top mesh projecting onto the bottom face. And that's something that we fix with the match by name setting that we had in Substance Painter. Where is it? Right here. So you did that correctly. You used, uh, you separated all the different pieces into both uh, low and high. But if you wanna fix even more of these tiny little issues and projection errors, then you can then, for instance, split this piece into its own and do the exact same thing with the high poly. And you can split it into as many pieces as you want. I honestly think that would be overkill because just consider how far we're zoomed in. Like no one is ever gonna zoom in this close. And truth be told, once you start adding textures and all of that, nothing of that is gonna be seen. So you did a pretty good job with the mesh overall. So this is looking pretty good now. And as I mentioned in the tutorial, you know, if you wanna get the best results out of your bake, then just make sure you have enough topology to match. Like for instance, if we zoom in right here, we, we can see how this doesn't look super smooth. I mean, I think I also forgot to subdivide the high poly when I exported it. But honestly, this is fine. Like at the distance it's gonna be rendered at, it looks good. And if you really did want to uh, have a really large bevel here and want it to look good in low poly, then just do what you did uh, over here. You know, just add a, a few more segments in the low poly. But yeah, I think this is actually my fault because I didn't subdivide it before exporting. I did not use uh, the sub D preview, my bad. And regarding the invisible door that you sent me, that really does just look like reversed faces. And I know you said you didn't have them, but Maya can be weird sometimes. It's not always entirely clear what's going on. So I have a cube right here, for instance, and if I duplicate it and then give it a negative scale, uh, faces don't look reversed, but technically they should be because it has a negative scale. 
So it seems fine for now, but when I actually freeze transformations, so hold down A and freeze transforms, notice how the faces still look exactly the same, but now the UVs are reversed. So Maya can just be weird sometimes. And what I would suggest is just remaking any of the parts that you want to have mirrored. So let's just do this very quickly right now. Let's get rid of the door and Let's pretend we want to recycle the UVs of the door because they both look exactly the same, right? And in my case, I planned to add some text and I didn't want the text to be read backwards on the other side. So I can't have flipped UVs for this. So what I did is I duplicated and rotated, right? So that way we have two separate objects that have the exact same UVs. So these we do not have to offset into the next quadrant because they are not reversed. So it's gonna be just fine if we leave them in that same quadrant all stacked. So that's good. The problem is when we want to have reversed uh, faces. So let's actually delete this and do that. So instead of just duplicating, I am going to mirror this time. So mirror and right off the bat, these faces are reversed and these ones are fine. So these we definitely do want to offset exactly by one quadrant. So this, as it is right now, should work perfectly fine. I, I think you just had a weird uh, issue with Maya's normals. So just select the whole thing, uh, probably freeze transforms just to make sure that it applies any of those negative scales. And then you'll be able to more easily identify if anything was actually reversed. So let's very quickly export this and let's just test it out and see. So here it is, I replaced the low poly, I redid the bake as I've been doing, and it works out just fine. So these are the UVs, and these are the reversed ones of the different quadrant that just get ignored. But because they're reversed, this should happen. There you go. So it's up to you to decide if you want reversed UVs or not. So if you don't want them, instead of mirroring, just duplicate and rotate instead. So just to summarize my shenanigans, we'll go back to Maya and delete all of this and delete all of the parts that are gonna be mirrored or flipped. For instance, I got rid of all of those. So I would focus just on this mesh first and make sure I get the, all of the uniques done first and then make sure the mesh is clean as well. So delete history, freeze transformations, and make sure that nothing looks reversed. And not until the very end and all of that is done, that is when I would start duplicating and rotating or selecting these and mirror. And a quick way of offsetting uh, all of our reverse UVs right after we mirror is to just go into face mode, click on back facing, and then offset them by one. So we're done. Oh, and one more thing, Mr. S. If you wanna bake at really low resolutions like 2K, then I would suggest you probably increase some of the padding. And I know that these probably aren't like the final UVs and some of these spaces are gonna be filled, but... but yeah, like some of these are kind of close together. So what happens when you use a really low resolution if you have a pixel like this, it can overlay over two different UV shells. So that's why turning up your resolution usually helps with a lot of these seams. And for the most part, they're fine, but yeah, some of these are like really close to each other, like right here. So yeah, one thing you can do is just, I'm only gonna select this side. I'm not gonna worry about the other quadrant. So I'll select one side, shift left click on layout. And here is where we can change our padding. So 16 is probably more than enough, but yeah, let's just go with 16. Sure. Yeah, so that's just gonna make sure that none of our UVs are too close to each other.